As we continue uh, with Unit 2, we are moving into Chapter 5 and taking a look at supply. Uh, we talked in Chapter 4 about demand, about consumers and what consumers want, uh, how that curve is put together, the inverse relationship between quantity and price. If price goes up, the quantity demand goes down. If the quantity, uh, if the price goes down, quantity demand goes up. So an opposite or inverse relationship. We talked about the demand curve, uh, how that is put together. We looked at the law of demand. Uh, we've looked at elasticity. We're now going to move into uh, the idea of supply, putting ourselves in the shoes of the producer. Uh, the example we're going to start out with here is babysitting. Um, the other day we had a, a fire drill. And part of the job uh, for Mr. Clemens' class is if we have a fire drill, lockdown, evac, whatever it is, uh, we go to the early childhood center and help the uh, little kids, the preschool kids, you know, across the road, sit down, keep them calm, things like that. And the, the mythical, hypothetical situation we came up with is what if all the ECFE staff had to go to a meeting? or whatever it is, and we were responsible for taking care of those little kids. So we'd ask our, you know, group of 30 students, how uh, many of you would be willing to babysit these kids, and for how long, specifically, if what they're going to pay you is 8 bucks an hour? Now, some people would say... You know, I'll do it for an hour. Some say, I wouldn't do it at all. I can't stand little kids, don't want to watch them. Now, some would love little kids, and they do it as long as you want. So we, we made some guesstimates there, and we said they'd be willing to watch them for about four hours, just as kind of our starting data. And then we said, well, what if they were going to pay a little bit more? Uh, what if they were going to pay 12 bucks an hour? Now, the idea being, are you willing to only babysit for that same four hours, would you babysit less or would you babysit more if the rate that you're able to be paid is $12 an hour? On average, most people said they'd be willing to do more. Maybe that goes up to six hours, maybe it's seven hours. Again, these are hypotheticals. We're just kind of making some numbers up. We go ahead and go, well, what if they're, gonna, they're in a bind and they're going to pay you 20 bucks an hour? And again, the, the idea is, you know, at 20 bucks an hour, you're willing to babysit more. If we go conservative, Mr. Clem, and I say, no, nah, we're only going to pay you two bucks an hour, you know, that, that may be not a whole lot. Okay, there's not a whole lot of people willing to offer to watch 25 kids, you know, under five years old for two bucks an hour. You know, they'll watch, and again, the assumption is by themselves. You know, at, at 8 bucks an hour, they'll watch them for a while. At 12 bucks, they'll watch them even more. At 20 bucks an hour, even more. The idea with supply is you need to take yourself and put it in the producer's shoes, in the producer's idea. When we talk demand, you want more the cheaper things are, the less expensive things are. Price goes down, we want more. Demand, price goes up, we want less. That's an inverse or an opposite relationship. When we talk supply, it is a similar relationship. The more you're able to earn from a business point of view, the more you're willing to offer. Prices go up, you're willing to offer more. Prices go up, you're willing to offer more. The idea Yes, you maybe have to pay overtime. You have to have your staff working a little bit longer, but there's more profit to be made the higher the price you can charge. Now, when we get into Chapter 6, we'll talk about, well, how do we match up the supply of a particular product with the demand of a particular product, and, and where are we at there? We're not quite to that point yet. We're just talking from the producer's point of view, how much of a product or service would you provide at every price in the market. And as those prices go up, you're willing to provide more. As those prices go down, you know, you're willing to provide less. So we talk about supply and law of supply. Supply being the amount of product that a producer or a company is willing to produce. Uh, you can put service in there as well at every different price in the market. Law of supply, it's the opposite of law of demand. Law of supply states that a company is willing to produce more 
the higher prices that they can charge for that item or that service. Uh, again, we have some examples here. Same idea, if, if you're able to make a, a widget and sell it at 10 bucks per, maybe you'd make 50. If you could sell it at 25 bucks per, you'd probably make more because there's more profit to be made. Uh, finishing up against supply curve, it is just the visual look of plotting out your points. You know, from a business point of view, what are you able to offer at certain prices that you can charge? Here is a uh, sample supply curve. Again, it's going to start on the inside uh, left, and it's going to work its way up and out to the right. Uh, supply curve designated with an S. Uh, if we were looking at, say, a demand curve, demand curve would be the opposite. It starts over here in the upper left and works its way down to the right. So the difference between supply and demand. If we looked at, uh, just like we did with demand, you may have certain products that have demand curves that are pretty steep. You know, a, a supply curve would be the same. A very steep looking supply curve. Um, again, we would call inelastic. And an inelastic supply curve, again, as you, you take a look, <clears throat> doesn't really matter how much you're able to charge. There's not a lot of change in that amount willing to produce. So it begs the question, if you can double, triple, quadruple your price, yet you can't uh, come up with more product to make, what, what kind of, give us an example of a product like that. An example uh, would maybe be Amish furniture. Uh, second example would be aircraft carriers. Both of these are very labor intensive uh, type products. If you've ever seen someone sit and whittle away at a piece of wood to make some Amish furniture, that takes a lot of time, okay? It's handcrafted, it takes a lot of time, not a lot of uh, mechanized uh, production in that. It's, it's very bare bones, very basic, okay? That's a lot of man hours. If, you know, the going rate for a piece of homage furniture is $15 per and you could maybe charge 30, there's only so many hours in the day that you're going to be able to make a product. Uh, so in turn, yeah, you could double the price, but... You know, very labor-intensive kind of uh, product or service, you know, there's only so much you're able to do. If you look at aircraft carriers, there's only so many places that are going to build aircraft carriers. They don't build them out in Fargo, North Dakota. Okay, there, there's a couple of ports on the East Coast, a couple on the West Coast uh, that are out there and that have the ability to produce something that large. Okay, you, you don't, you know, make a... a how many ever thousand foot aircraft carrier and then ship it across the Rocky Mountains. It just doesn't work that way. Okay, so it's, it's a specific job that has limits to it. You're only able to produce that in certain places. So again, your aircraft carrier, whether it's 12 billion or 20 billion or trillion or whatever the, the denomination of money is, there's only so much that can be made, very labor intensive job. It doesn't really matter the price per se there's a limit at how much you can produce. You flip that idea around if you go the opposite of labor intensive, something that is highly mechanized, uh, something that is mass produced, that would be elastic supply. You give the visual, you can flip the switch, and we can go ahead and just let the machine crank out the units, and if the price isn't right, then we'll just shut the machine down. You're going to have your supply that is elastic, be a very flat, uh, shallow, still starting on the left and working its way out to the right, but you notice that... Uh, any little change in price, margins are pretty tight, any little change in price, the amount that we're willing to make uh, can change significantly. So as you take a look at inelastic, price changes a whole lot, quantity 
able to be produced or willing to be put out in the market does not change very much. You look at an elastic supply curve, price changes just a little. The quantity willing to be made changes a ton. Uh, here again is kind of throwing both of those ideas together in one shot. Your inelastic, labor intensive, your elastic, more of a mass produced. And in here in the middle, your kind of standard supply curve.